Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Um, it's a brilliant little beautiful studios here uh, in Hammersmith. I have to say, I'm not very impressed, though, by the standard of graffiti uh, in the gents' toilet here. I was in there earlier. I don't know if you know one of the cubicles. Six-inch high letters in one of the cubicles. Somebody has written, suck my cock. <laughs> Pathetic, childish, ignorant thing to do. There's no name, no phone number, <laughs> no address, nothing. How am I meant to get in touch with you? <laughs> what a waste of my valuable time. <laughs> Four hours I waited in that cubicle. <laughs> Nothing. Not a dicky bird. <laughs> Not a sausage. <laughs> uh, a bloke came in, I was going, is that, is that, is that you? Is that, yeah. no, no one answered it. You know, one, one bloke even attempted to suck my cock. <laughs> which wasn't what I wanted at all. I did see a good bit of graffiti in a pub. I was in, in Bristol uh, the other day. One of the cubicles there, someone had written, I am 12 inches, do you want me? Uh, which is quite funny on its own, but uh, <laughs> underneath that, someone else had written, that depends on how big your cock is. Uh, <laughs> I was chatting up a girl in a bar the other day. It wasn't going very well, I have to say. I liked her, she wasn't really interested in me. I was annoying her, if anything, but... Uh, <laughs> But I was persistent, as you're going to find out, ladies, if you do just hang around by the bar after the show. I'm persistent, that's all I've got. It's my superpower dating, persistence. Try and wear them down. Hopefully get a pity fuck. Uh, I mean, is there any other kind, mate, if we're being honest? So... <laughs> I want you to know, I didn't just pick on you because you're near the front. I had a good look around everyone, it was still you. <laughs> I said, uh, come on, I know it's going very well tonight. Give me another chance. Let me take you out for dinner. She said, you take me out for dinner. I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. <laughs> I said, uh, what if I wasn't on fire? <laughs> I don't think we really understood homosexuality, did we, when we were at school, when we were kids. I think we knew it existed. I don't think we were really aware of what it was. I think that's a shame if you've got kids, if you're ever going to have them. Just explain this stuff to them. Be honest about it, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I think that's where homophobia begins, through ignorance. But I think it's clear we didn't understand homosexuality as children from the sign we generally use as kids to indicate that a man was gay. It was generally that, wasn't it? That was generally... <laughs> generally the sign indicative of homosexuality, which uh, I would say shows a fairly basic misunderstanding. <laughs> of the homosexual love act. I think, uh, as kids, we must have imagined if two men fell in love, they'd go to a room somewhere, take off their clothes, <laughs> stand facing opposite each other, <laughs> approximately one foot apart, <laughs> on average, and then just very gently bump the, the end of their erect <laughs> penises together over and over again until achieving orgasm in maybe three or four months. So uh, it's... <laughs> It's weird, because we understood heterosexual sex, didn't we, as kids? The sign we'd use as kids to indicate heterosexual sex was that. Well, now, that's, that's vaguely accurate from, from what I recall. I don't know why I'm asking you, but uh, I, guess, <laughs> I guess... if we'd understood homosexual sex, the correct sign, more accurate hand sign to indicate that a man was gay. Should it be more like this one? It'd be more like... <laughs> it's a beautiful expression of love between two people. Don't be childish about this. To be honest with you, that does make homosexuality look a lot more appealing than that, doesn't it? I think, <laughs> had we had the correct information, Morris would been willing to give that guy. I thought it was that. If I'd known it was that, I'd have tried out being gay for a couple of weeks just to see how that had panned out for me. A teacher should have come over and gone, that's not what they do, you fucking idiots. <laughs> that's what they get up to. That's, that's what they do, the lucky bastards. <laughs> not just on their birthdays. Every day of the year. <laughs> That's better than a floppy old vagina, isn't it? Look again. <laughs> Get some purchase on that, can't you? <laughs> to be honest, um, I don't think we really understood lesbian sex either, because the Simon used as kids to indicate that a woman was gay. Was Gemma? Was that? Was that was... <laughs> Again, I think it shows a fairly basic misunderstanding of the lesbian love act. I think as kids, we must imagine if two women fell in love, they'd go to a room somewhere, take off their clothes, go to opposite ends of the room, <laughs> then run at each other, <laughs> vagina first, smashing their genitalia together, <laughs> crashing their pudenda, crunching their beef curds back, 
Perhaps an achieving orgasm or breaking their pelvis, whichever came first. <laughs> I guess we'd understood lesbian sex. Uh, the correct sign we should have used to indicate that a woman was getting. If you see any kids doing this wrong, sir, do go up and correct them, okay? You won't, you won't get into any kind of trouble, don't worry. So, more accurate hand sign to indicate that a woman was gay. It should be more like this, but more like. Uh... <laughs> As is my understanding from the instructional videos I have seen. So. Uh... <laughs> You know, there is a point when I'm doing that routine. I realise I'm 43 years old. I know I don't look it. Stop shouting out. It's embarrassing. But 43 years old. Here I am on national television, BBC Three. It still counts. Uh, <laughs> licking. That's my job, to lick my own hand whilst fondling my own imagine, semi-imaginary person. <laughs> I think my dad's proud of me. He's not. He's ashamed. <laughs> I am 43. I'm a very tragic... Individual, I really, I'm a, I'm, I've never been married, I've got no kids. I'm beginning to think I've wasted my life. Don't be like me, you young people. I think, I think a lot of men my age, they maybe look at me and envy the free... I live this kind of student lifestyle, do whatever I like. I think men my age maybe envy me that. It's not as good as you think, fellas. I think when maybe you're about 17 or 18, you think it's a good idea to go out and sleep with loads of different people. I think, I think most of us get a bit older, into our 20s. We realise it's more satisfying to be in a long-term exclusive relationship with someone we have genuine feelings for, that we cherish and love. Then we get a bit older, uh, <laughs> into our 30s, and we realise, no, no, I was right, first of all, but it's uh, <laughs> too late to have kids by then, you know, to have to divide up the CD collection. It's, it's more trouble than it's worth. Uh, best just sit it out, wait for the blessed release of death. Um, <laughs> I was in a long-term relationship a few years ago. We were going through a bit of a sexual malaise. We were trying to spice things up a bit. I had an idea how we could spice up. Uh, the love of my, my girlfriend had an idea how we could spice up our love making. She said, why don't we get a Mars bar, right? You know, the Mars bar sweet. We can melt that down to a kind of paste in a little bowl over the stove. We can smear that over each other's genitals and lick it off. <laughs> I said, uh, seems like a bit of a waste of a perfectly good Mars bar. <laughs> the thing is, Mars bars taste really nice. They're, they're delicious. Whilst genitals... <laughs> They tend to taste a bit sort of genitally, really, so... <laughs> although you would improve that genital taste by smearing some Mars bar upon it, I would argue that the Mars bar taste itself would be impaired... <laughs> ..by the genitals you mentioned. The, the way I look at it, if Mr Mars had wanted his Mars bars to taste of genitals, he'd have put some genitals in the recipe, wouldn't he? <laughs> like the bloke who invented scampi fries did to such great commercial success. <laughs> It's the Gillian McKeith school of seasoning. So, um, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I had an idea how we could spice up our lovemaking. I said to her, why don't you bring your best friend to bed with us, eh? Three in a bed, menage a trois, them lezzing up. <laughs> she said to me, you've got enough problems satisfying one woman at a time. What makes you think you could cope with two? <laughs> thought she got me there, girl, thought that was clever. <laughs> she was so wrong. I said, well, that is the entire beauty of the system. When I'm done, you two can finish each other off for me. <laughs> whilst I sleep. <laughs> a woman knows what a woman wants and has the patience to see it through to its tedious conclusion. <laughs> she finished with me shortly after that conversation, so now I'm reduced to having one in a bed sex. Menage a un. Which, uh, <laughs> well, it's worked out great for me, cos I forgot I really like to have sex with someone that I pity. Uh, it's... It's the only way I can get off, so, uh... <laughs> so, who is it who says potato anyway? Because <laughs> someone should tell them. They're definitely pronouncing that word wrong. Uh, you might think it's not a big deal. Let's maintain the status quo. Let's call the whole thing off. No. <laughs> They're saying the word potato badly and correctly, and someone has to tell them. You might say, oh, let them go on saying potato, you can vaguely understand what they mean. You have to think, five years down the line, that bloke's in a swanky restaurant about to propose to the woman he loves, a snooty waiter comes over, takes his order, he goes, oh, by the way, does that come with potatoes? <laughs> the waiter's going to snigger, the woman's going to think I'm not marrying this bloke, he can barely speak. <laughs> go up to your potato saying, friend, be a mate with a potato, go, look, mate, what would you call this? He'll go, well, that's an easy question, I'm looking forward to answering that, as I know the correct answer. The name that that item is is commonly referred to by is the potato. That is it's... No, no, it isn't. You're the only person in the world who calls it that, right? Everyone else calls it a potato. You're saying it wrong. I'm just being a mate trying to help you out. You might go, well, that's just a matter of pronunciation, isn't it? It's like, you say tomato, I say tomato. It's exactly the same as that. No, mate, no. No, it's not a tomato-tomato situation, cos some people do say tomato, 
they're incorrect to do that, but <laughs> we, we can at least have an argument about it. There's a discussion to be had over the pronunciation of that word. You're the only person in the world who says potato. You mean different for different sake. I mean, I'm all for the evolution of language, but you can't just start making up your own pronunciations of words as you fancy willy-nilly language will break down. No one will be able to understand each other. <laughs> well, it end. I say banana, you say banani. <laughs> I say pomegranate, you say kumquat. It's got to be the same. <laughs> or language doesn't work, it's potato. Potato. The only person in the world who might conceivably say potato, apart from you, is Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> Not the good Peter Sellers Inspector Clouseau either. The evil Steve Martin pissing on the grave of a genius Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> what kind of arrogance or greed or stupidity could make a man think, yeah, I'll have a crack at Inspector Clouseau. No one's really nailed that part. Yeah, they are. I'd probably be the best at that. People remember me in there. Don't make excuses for him. He's done it before. He's done it with Bilko. He should have learnt. What a fucking twat. <laughs> and he's wrong. He's wrong. Uh, the French don't say potato. I wish they did. They don't even say potato. Instead of saying potato or potato, the French call a potato a pomme de terre, which literally means apple of the ground. That is not a good description of a potato. <laughs> a potato and an apple are nothing like each other. I mean, they're both foodstuffs. That's about as far as... What does that mean? A lasagna is a lion bar of the oven. I don't... <laughs> I don't think so. An apple's a fruit, a potato is a tuber. An apple's green, a potato's brown. A raw apple tastes delicious. A raw potato tastes like a man's semen. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> I've never eaten a raw potato, so I... Uh... <laughs> I think we have to satirise the French, cos they're wrong to call a potato an apple of the ground. That's wrong. But everyone in the English-speaking world has to do this for this to work. From now on, everyone in the English-speaking world has to start referring to apples as potatoes of the sky. <laughs> Which is factually incorrect, but I think that's a better name for apple than apple, wouldn't you? Sky potato? That would... <laughs> that would liven Genesis up a bit, wouldn't it? Do you, do you want a sky potato, Eve? Yeah, of course I fucking do, wouldn't it? <laughs> the reason this is a good satire of the French, you have to imagine little French boys in school learning English. Uh, the teacher comes in one day, goes, Voici la pomme. Mais en Angleterre, on dit la pomme de terre de ciel. So the little French boy will say in French, what, wait? So the English literally call an apple an apple of the ground of the sky. That's a bit ridiculous. Why they just call it an apple? It's in the sky. Just call it an apple. Why go through that rigmarole? The English is stupid. The English language is ridiculous. At which point, I will burst into the classroom <laughs> and say, no, little French boy. <laughs> it's you who is ridiculous. You and the entire French-speaking world for calling a potato an apple of the ground, which, by the way, doesn't resemble in any way at all. The rest of the world are laughing at you. They think you're... Idiot. I've just satirised you and everyone you know, your mum, your dad. <laughs> Monsieur Lucas at the boulangerie. Oh, yeah, I got, I got him good. Made you all look like fucking idiots. <laughs> How'd you like them, Sky Potatoes? <laughs> Thank you. So, uh... One more cock joke to end on. I've got a bona fide way of determining the length of a man's penis. You're going to be glad you came for this. There's a lot of old wives' tales about this. A lot of people say the size of a man's hands is indicative, but I've got really tiny hands, so that cannot be true. <laughs> but uh, this is for any girls looking to pull tonight. Uh, any gay men looking to pull? Let's face it, mate, any straight men by the end of the evening. <laughs> if you had a sniff anywhere else. A mouth's a mouth, isn't it? <laughs> but, um, it's just true. The best way... When you're as old as me, you lot, you'll know I, I'm right. The best... I've got this always works. is 100% guaranteed. The best way to determine the length of a man's penis is to get him to show it to you and then measure it with a ruler. That is, uh, <laughs> that is 100% effective. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Here comes Russell Howe.